Why? Why did they just do that? What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code ITRESOLVES10YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to another gameplay video. Hope you guys are doing exceptionally well today. Let's go ahead and try this one out. It is Mono White Life Gain with a couple of new additions from the, the Crimson Val sets. So uh, first and foremost, it is, you'll notice it's labeled Mono White, but we do technically have red in here. The reason being, uh, we do actually uh, run four Lantern Flares here. It's an instant for two mana. It does have a cleave cost, but normally it deals X damage to target creature or Planeswalker, and you gain X life, where X is the number of creatures you control. That alone is good enough for us but i figured why not go ahead and give us the option to cleave it if we needed to and so uh we've got those pathway lands in there just as an option uh to be able to do that where it, it we can just pay into x whatever we feel the need is uh and that does gain us quite a bit of life which works quite well with this deck now along with all of this we do have the uh the book of exalted deeds and faceless haven combo uh worth noting that because there is field of ruin and standard this doesn't always work but it is actually quite a nice little combo and truthfully just gaining life every turn and spitting out some angels is never bad uh so i'm super into that uh, the rest of the deck is pretty straightforward. Uh, we've got the Lunark Veteran, we've got the Cleric Class, all stuff you would expect. We do have Fateful Absence in here on top of the Lantern Flare. We're expecting to see quite a number of very, very strong creatures, especially with Mono Green uh, and things like that, getting a lot of buffs from the newest set. So I want to be able to not only flare them, but also Fateful Absence, anything that gets a little too big for our liking. This also helps us deal with Planeswalkers, of course, as well as the Flare, but just kind of doubles up there. Uh, we do have the hollow priest the intrepid adversary which is just you know great little pieces of uh two drop uh creatures there but then we also have voice of the blessed this is a pretty awesome card a two two for two whenever you gain life put a one one counter on it uh as long as it has four or more one one counters on it it has flying and vigilance and then if it has 10 or more it gets indestructible uh which is kind of ridiculous so uh this can get out of hand quite quickly uh and i'm hoping we get to see that today we do have Righteous Valkyrie here as well. So Garden Savior is a great way to bring some of these things back. Uh, we obviously have a lot in the two, the one and two drop slot, especially the two drop slot. Uh, and so bring, being able to bring stuff back with the Garden Savior is just really nice. We also have Valkyrie Harbinger there uh, at the very, very top end. Don't really expect to play too many of them. I've only got one. So uh, this is one of those like, OK, we we're probably going to win the game if we can drop this card, hopefully. Uh, but. Uh, as far as the lands go, we do have the, the Cave of the Frost Dragon and then the Four Faceless Haven, and that's it. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. We are running, I believe, 22 lands with this. Yeah, uh, I did kind of trim down on the lands with this one because really most of our deck is three and below, and I'd rather make sure that we're drawing threats and more important things than just lands. But we'll see how it goes, guys. Let's jump into a few games. Let's see what we can do. All right, guys, here we are for game number one, and this is about the perfect start. Uh, we've got a one into two into three, and yeah, I mean, this is this is kind of perfect. So we just kind of have to hope everything sticks around. Chances are maybe not uh, seeing black red. I'm assuming this might be a vampire's list, but uh, we will certainly find out. Haunted Ridge is very scary, though, for us. So let's see what we can do. All right. Cool. Uh, let's do this. Let's go ahead and throw out the Voice of the Blessed here. I think that's probably just the best play. Essentially, just a, a two mana 3-3 three, three immediately is pretty solid, uh, in my opinion. Now, you can do some fun shenanigans with this, uh, in particular with things like um, Luminarch Aspirant, things like that, which we have not really capitalized on in this deck, but you can certainly uh, work towards that at some point if you are interested. Uh, I will go ahead and attack in here. Um, I don't think there's a big reason not to. Let's go ahead and get some damage in. I doubt that they would have really wanted to uh, double block that. I don't think they want to lose this. So there's one damage to each opponent and they get a blood token. Sure. That's, I mean, fine. Uh, the question is, do we want to do this? Um... I don't think so. I'm going to pass. Uh, now, that is going to trigger the uh, Florian here, which is very, very good. But 
I think that's okay. We'll see. Uh, next turn, we actually just get to Righteous Valkyrie if we want, or just Book of Exalted Deeds. We've got some options. Um, I'd really like to get another land. If we can do that, then we can drop a Lunark Veteran and the Righteous Valkyrie, which would be kind of sick. Uh, okay. Interesting. Um, I mean, I think the play is just going to be Righteous Valkyrie. We don't have the third white for the book. Uh, let's just do this. It's going to gain us a good bit of life uh, and then get this thing up where we need it to be. Fantastic. Um, we're just going to keep attacking in. Obviously, we do lose a little bit of momentum here on blocks, but like this is now just a 6-6 six, six flying vigil. Like, that's really good. <laughs> uh, it was turn four, I suppose, so we are technically behind on the lands, but like, that's really good. Okay. Uh, so what's the goal? I guess it's just to get this thing up to having 10 counters on it. Uh, let's do this first. All right, so this is going to get three counters on it. Is that correct? Yep. <laughs> um, now we could just kill that, I suppose. Um, I like that less. <laughs> let's have fun. <laughs> Uh, yep, there we go. <laughs> that was really fun. All right, cool, we did it. Uh, let's move to game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Uh, and this isn't a super exciting hand, but I do think it's one that we can keep. Uh, we definitely lead off with the white source. We may end up trying to get the voice of the blessed down first, um, but we'll see. Uh, interesting, okay. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and throw that voice down. Uh, both this and the Hollowed Priest are quite good. Obviously, voice is much better, uh, but they both kind of take the same role of any time you gain life, you get to throw some counters on them and, you know, obviously play up to that. So uh, it is quite good. All right. Uh, well, this brings up some options for us, certainly. Um, we can do this. I'm kind of OK with doing this now. Uh, just get that done. That puts a counter here and allows us to attack in, which I think is worth it. Uh, next turn, we might try and drop the book. Oh, they might actually just hit us with... Uh, or get the book out of hand here. I'm very curious, actually, to see what they do. Um, all of... I, I think the Hollowed Priest is the one they're not worried about the most, I guess. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, again, that's kind of fine. Let's do this. Uh, let's. Do we want to just flare now? I don't think so. Um, I think the play is going to be to just spit some stuff out here and pass. Because now, anytime we gain life, everything is just going to get bolstered up like crazy. Uh, so they kind of need to do something about that. Uh, note your life to draw a card for it. I really should be playing this. Why am I not playing this? Um, <laughs> that's a much... It's just a really good card. Um, now, I think we do just play this out. That's going to gain us a little bit of life. Obviously, it's going to uh, throw some counters around, and now we can just attack in with everything. Uh, thankfully, this doesn't draw them a card this turn. Uh, they do gain life out of it, though, which is a little scary, but it is what it is. Uh, we also do have the Sigarden Savior uh, that, you know, if we get another land, eventually we can just drop. So if either if any of these die, any combination of two of these die, we actually can still get through it, uh, which is kind of OK. All right. Um, there's a Faceless Haven. Uh, interesting. All right, so what's the best maneuver here? Um, we can activate the cave, actually. Let's do that. Why did I? I'm dumb. I didn't count. I th that was really stupid. Uh, it's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. I just completely miscounted. I was like, yeah, four. That's enough. <laughs> 
Uh, it's fine. Uh, cool. So they're gonna gain a good bit of life back. They do have the Field of Ruins, so they can kill uh, one of our man lands here at some point. Oh, very nice. The rune. Uh, that's actually really cool. It does give it lifelink there, so that's strong. Here they go, gaining all the life. We really just need some um, some life gain -er. It doesn't. I, I don't really care what it is. We just need one. Ask and you shall receive. Okay, fantastic. Um, yes, right? We just play it. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Um, we will attack with everything. They can block, obviously, this and not die. Um, but the, the fact of the matter is we're just dealing as much damage as we can, and that's all that matters. Um, we need one more land for the savior, but we actually don't have anything in our graveyard to bring back anyway, so that's not super relevant yet. We just need creatures. Really, that's all we need. Um... They're just gaining three by attacking here, uh, which is relevant. Uh, I think we just use this, right? Uh, we attack here, 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 and here. Again, they can block the 3-3, three, three, but it's more a matter of we're just trying to deal as much as we can. 2, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right, um, I mean, they're down to four. The trick is they can just gain so much off of the Sigarda Splendor. I don't know, actually, I kind of like the idea of not run. I mean, this is a very good card, don't get me wrong, but um, I don't know if it's the right one. We'll see. All right, yeah, dude, you got it. Uh, that's very good. So we can't just drop this, which would really help our board. Um, I guess that's the play. I don't love it, but it's like, I think just the best thing we can do. Uh, do we, we can't really, uh, can we attack in? They can gain enough that, no. This is a dangerous turn, guys, a very dangerous turn. Um, hmm. There's the book. Okay. Yep. They're just gaining enough life to, to trigger it. Okay, so they are going to attack in. So we can not double block. Okay. Nope. We just take five. <laughs> In my head, I was like, yeah, we could double block and kill it. But no, obviously not. Uh, yep. Not good. Not good at all. Um. I mean, we just play the book out, we do this, gain some life. Uh, okay, that's semi-helpful. This is a very interesting uh, board state that we are in at the moment. Um, they definitely are winning, I mean, by a long way. Wow. All right, yeah, Sigarda and Splendor, or Sigarda Splendor, a card we should have played. Mistakes were made, but you know what? It's okay. It's totally fine. Um, so we have to block something. <laughs> now we don't have to block anything if we don't want to. Um, now we do. Now we don't. Okay. <laughs> uh, right. I am going to block one of these just to get it out of here. We take seven, but crucially, we're not dead to just one thing next turn, so that's pretty pretty useful. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so we can pay it twice? I mean, that's kind of cool. Um, it's not super helpful, but... Like, we're just dead in the air, right? Yeah. All right. I'm going to go ahead and concede. They got us. Let's go ahead and move into another game. All right, guys. Here we are for our third game, I believe. I may not be counting correctly. Uh, anyway, this is a relatively easy keep. Um, it's not perfect, but it's definitely something we can shoot for. So we will do the best we can. Ideally, you'd like to have a Lunark veteran on turn one. 
Uh, that just sets up so well for both of the two drops in the deck that, that or a, a handful of the two drops. There's quite a number of two drops in the deck. Um, but that really does help a good bit, so kind of not great, but that's fine. Uh, let's throw out the voice. Chances are this is going to eat a burn spell. I mean, they've got snow-covered mountains. I can only assume that they've got uh, frostbites. Ah, just seems reasonable. Um, but they are going to express a iteration. Playing an island. Okay. Uh, it just means they didn't have it, so that's pretty good. I guess we just play out the Valkyrie and attack. And hope they can't kill the Valkyrie. <laughs> uh, again, if they kill the voice, it's not the end of the world. We've got the savior um, that eventually we'll be able to play. So, I mean, we'll see. Uh, we do have the, the Lantern Flare also that at some point we can just shoot one of their creatures if this is like the dragon's deck or, you know, something like that. I assume this is either a counter spell or Alron's Epiphany. All right, Thundering Rebuke. Rebuke. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, that's helpful. Um, I'm gonna make them have it. If they don't have another Thundering Rebuke or a way to kill the Valkyrie, that's going to be a big deal. Um, but they couldn't counter that turn, so if we want to take the opportunity to get the Valkyrie down now. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I don't have super high hopes against this deck. It's just in general, I think, a pretty rough matchup for us, but we definitely give it a shot. Okay. Not going to block, taking four. Definitely just the uh, classic Is It styled deck, uh, which is a very good one. All right, so let's play this first. Let's see what they do. Just out of curiosity. Okay, they did let it hit. Uh, that's kind of interesting. So it's going to put some counters on here. Uh, let's attack first, I suppose. See what they do. If anything, they may not do anything. Uh, we can actually use this anytime now. Do we want to do it now where they might not have a counter? I'm going to pass. I'm going to leave this up. I, we'll see. If they have a play now, we'll definitely end up using it. Okay, they do. Perfect. We're going to kill it. Um... If they have a counter spell, I guess they can play it off of the treasure token. Um, but that's burning a counter just to save a thing, which doesn't seem that great. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Yep, they are going to do it, though. All right, we burned a counter spell. Uh, do they have another? What? Oh, they didn't have... Oh, I see. They didn't have the three snow permanents. Why did they frostbite, then? Huh. Works for me. <laughs> I mean, that's great. <laughs> I feel kind of bad, but at the same time, I don't really at all, so... <laughs> that's fine. Um, Expressive iterations coming down, sure. All right. Guys, we dodged a bullet. Uh, quite accidentally, but I'll take it. There's the epiphany. Okay. Yep. Uh, now it gets really scary, because if they just have another extra turn spell, which they very easily could... We did play the Is It Extra Turns deck that I created. Uh, just... Well, yes, it was Friday. I don't know when this is going up, so... Cool. So we're just dead, right? Yeah, they just attack in and we're dead. That's really annoying. Uh, let's do one more game, guys. We got time. All right, guys, here we are. This is going to be our final game. Uh, and this is about as this is kind of the dream start. You've got a one into two into three with Fateful Absence backup. That seems pretty good. Uh, let's see what we can do. Go ahead and drop that veteran. I have high hopes. Clearly that always leads to a bad decision, but that's fine. <laughs> let's uh, let's play the voice out. Or the, yeah, the voice, and we'll attack for one. Why not? Next turn, we just play Valkyrie. Seems seems like the play. Uh, we might just want to kill that uh, as well. Um, 
Nah, we play the Valkyrie. And we pass. Now they can obviously fight something off here if they've got like a Blizzard Brawl, uh, which is pretty likely. So that's the only reason why I feel Fateful Absence would have been a better play, but this is fine actually. Um, it's not great, but it's not the end of the world either. I'm gonna say no blocks, we'll take four. Um, it's a good bit of damage, but it's not the end of the world. All right, uh, let's drop this first. Obviously, it's going to do a wonders for this voice. Uh, it's going to get two more counters on it. Perfect. Um, let's drop this just to allow for the Fateful Absence play at some point. Um, let's attack in with these two. So now, in response to a Blizzard Brawl or some kind of fight spell, we actually can just Fateful Absence, whatever they're targeting on their side. Uh, alternatively, we can also just kill the Chariot uh, if they decided for some reason to attack in with it, which I feel like is a bad play given we've got a 6-6, but hey, not my place to tell you what to do, you know what I mean? They did leave up one mana, so maybe they do have a Brawl. Sure. You got it. Um... Interesting. I feel like this isn't a great attack. Am I wrong? I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I feel like this isn't a very good attack. Um, We're just going to do this. We're going to eat the chariot, eat a 2-2, and then take a little bit of damage, but nothing, nothing bad happened to us, so that's good. Um, <laughs> that's a little odd. Uh... Let's attack here, here, uh, and I guess here because this is technically a lethal attack. So they're going to have to block here if they want to just stay in the game. Or they just die. Why? Why did they just do that? They could have very easily stayed in the game. Whatever, we won. We're amazing. Let's talk about the deck, guys. All right, so mono white life gain. Uh, first and foremost, I made mistakes in, in deck building, obviously. Uh, I do think the Sigarda's aid or whatever it is, that, that enchantment would have been a very nice inclusion, and I always forget about that card, so that's really on me. But regardless, the deck did okay. Uh, fairly well. Obviously, it didn't measure up against the uh, uh, the opposing life gain deck, uh, which I think is mostly due to that card. But overall, it did pretty well. I like it. Mono white life gain always really just life gain in general always feels good. It's just so satisfying to gain a ton of life and keep yourself in the game. Uh, and so it is really fun. This still has that mentality. It still works extraordinarily well. And with some new inclusions, I do think the Lantern Flare is like a really solid card uh, for this deck. Um, I think the Fateful Absences would have been replaced with the enchantment, uh, and that would have helped us out quite a bit. So that's just my view. Regardless, very, very fun. I highly encourage you to uh, try this one out. Maybe build your own. Share a deck list. If you've got one created, it would mean a lot. Uh, I'm all too happy to play it. But thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you again very soon for some more gameplay videos.